and welcome back. Today, I am joined by Dan Gilbert, who is the founder and CEO of Brain Labs. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for taking out the time and talking today. Pleasure to be here, Dave. Now, I remember you, Daniel, from uh, our days at Google back in Dublin, probably, what, 10 years ago at this point? Something like uh, that, yeah. And yeah. you always seem to have like this kind of entrepreneurial spirit to begin with. You were always looking for like a little bit of a side hustle, even when you were at Google. And now <laughs> as like a CEO and founder yourself, like where do you think that that entrepreneurial spirit has come from? Do you know, I, I loved Google, but it was it was the um, it was the lack of ability to be entrepreneurial that probably finally got me right, which is why I decided to leave and start Brain Labs. Um, but my my kind of entrepreneurial spirit definitely started. A, lot, a long time before that, like dealing in um, fantasy football uh, uh, cards in the playground, which I think graduated to Pokemon cards at some point, like whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever was the thing, um, Pogs and Keenies. Uh, I was always into that, uh, you know, that idea of, of generating something out of nothing. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that grew up over the years into eBay businesses and this kind of thing. Um, uh, it was kind of a natural evolution for me. So Google was amazing, but I was, it was always going to happen, right? Like I had to, I had to go and do something because um, uh, I love it. You know, it's the ultimate test and, and challenge. Uh, and what was that moment for you at Google that said like, okay, I need to go off. I need to do something like, and uh, you know, when you found something that you were like, this is something that I want to work on. This is something that I want to do. What was that moment for you? You know, it's, it's, it's two things. I wouldn't want to characterize it over negatively, right? But there's, there's the kind of like downside upside. And, you know, in, in terms of the upside, like the opportunity, I definitely saw, you know, this is going back 10 years when, when we were there, where we were talking to all these sophisticated advertisers and we were talking about the power of data and automation and all the things that you could do with that. And you'd get loads of like excited nodding heads, but no ability to follow through. And that wasn't surprising because media was still being kind of traded in that kind of above the line type of paradigm where digital was this kind of add on at the end, right? We'll buy all of this and then we'll buy some digital at the end. Uh, and you and I both know that at the time uh, it should have been treated as more of an ad, more than an add on and this amazing opportunity to scale digitally. Um, you know, I think the flip of it for me personally was that, um, you know, I was working at this incredible company, like it was the best place to work in the world, uncategorically at the time, right? And everyone reminded us of it. Uh, uh, but really an incredible employer brand with amazing people working on exciting projects and being you know, well paid uh, and, and effectively working with your mates. And you know, I knew that I had to do something else when that wasn't quite enough for me. So I knew it wasn't them. <laughs> it was definitely me. Uh, you know, it wasn't like I was working at some like terrible company and I was like, oh, if only I could get into Google, like I was there. And I was, you know, still this bit of me was like, I really like this, but hey, like there's gotta be more. So I kind of had that dual force, which is personal <laughs> and then like opportunistic, uh, like personal and commercial, uh, you know, that, that sort of came together pretty quickly. Like it was, it was kind of like, I gotta do this. So. Um, so I left and, and Brain Labs was, was, you know, at the start, uh, well, still is a digital marketing agency and, and uh, you know, kind of started from, from me at home uh, in my attic, uh, in my parents' attic, um, grown from there to about 400 people over the last eight years. And now as, um, as, as um, history is not supposed to repeat itself, but I'm back in my attic now. So <laughs> due, 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 due to a bit of coronavirus, uh, the office is closed and, uh, you know, I'm in an attic. Thankfully, it's now my own attic, not my parents' attic. So, you know, oh, oh, oh that, that, that's good then, because, like, I myself, I'm living in my girlfriend's basement right now. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, it doesn't sound so cool. Stereotypical, <laughs> like, 30-year-old, like, moving back in with parents kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you, uh, you manage someone else's parents and you're in the basement. So I guess, like, you know, <laughs> I'm doing, doing fine. <laughs> it's baby steps, right? It's baby steps. Um, you know, one thing that you touched on there was like often like you, the challenge there of like you were focused on like a digital first agency, specifically at a time where for a lot of businesses, like digital was still an add on rather than a must have, um, especially in regards to things like automation and programmatic where like your agency kind of like really moved into in very early on. Um, like what were some of the challenges that you had in like kind of uh, telling that story and capturing like your first clients like attention uh, to get them on board. Sure, it's interesting. Like the the market caught up to a certain extent, right? So we were we like we were we were, we were not facing headwinds. We had tailwinds. So you know, it wasn't 
it wasn't that the, the journey has been without challenges, right? Like there's hundreds and millions of them, but but from a kind of macroeconomic perspective, like we really have ridden a wave. Like you don't you don't have to be, I guess, like from an investment when you look at this from an investment thesis, like it's easy to back good management teams that are in a good market that's growing because you'd expect that their minimum growth rate would be the market growth rate. So I think, you know, to be humble about this, like we chose the right type of product at the right time and that reduced the friction um, quite substantially. Um, uh, you know, it's not, not that it didn't come with challenges, like you're still probably within there some uh, brackets of clients that are still thinking in that kind of old way um, that you have to get around. But, um, you know, in general, the kind of market forces were with us, not against us. That, that's good, like because I think that's one thing as well that, you know, sometimes a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of like uh, founders that I talk to kind of almost forget about that, where it's like, it's not just about like the product, it's about the timing as well, where it's like, if things are moving in the right direction for you, uh, it makes your life as an entrepreneur, as a founder, significantly easier, as you say, if you're riding that wave. Um, yeah. And like, you know, rather than like, chasing that wave when you leave uh, leave it too late so that's probably another reason why you know uh that point of like you leaving where you aspire to more it, it makes yeah. it easier if you know that what you're you're working on is like the the direction that things are moving in you know oh yeah and like you can't be too far ahead either and i think the biggest test of that is like in an in an agency market right if you imagine we run marketing campaigns for clients so to, to that end like the stuff that we have to do has to be relevant for the kind of here and now so we have to be investing in what's coming in the future, but also highly relevant to what's there now. When you get like VC backed product type businesses, a lot of that can be built around like a future that doesn't yet exist. So you're investing ahead of the curve to, to build a future that, that will become easier in the future, like will, will become more viable in the future. Like every, well, not every, but take, take an Uber, for example, like they might not be profitable at the moment, but the thesis says that the world will be like this, this, and this in the future. We'll have autonomous cars, a clever algorithm for ride sharing uh, plus you know there won't be any gas expenses to pay so we won't have the drivers will be able to share routes and it won't cost anything to run the cars for example so even if the unit economics are poor now like we know that they'll improve over time in this future existing world but we need to invest a load of money to be ahead of that curve like that's roughly how the vc um like the ecosystem should work it obviously fails in instances like we work where um, the unit economics or the, the market is not going to change. There's not going to be a future in which the space doesn't constitute the space. That was the whole problem with it in the first instance. Whereas when you relate it back into the into our world, uh, you know, in, in that VC space, right? Like if you get your timing too wrong, then you just become a, a kind of cash uh, a drain for too long and then eventually the business fails. Like it doesn't mean that the market product fit was wrong. It just means that it was maybe too early and that future didn't quite come in time. Uh, whereas with what we've got, it's like, if you don't have a good product market fit in the now, then you've got nothing to sell. And therefore, like, you know, if you're too early, like if you're investing, when Google was saying invest in voice search, which never really came, if you're building voice search capability and this, that, and the other, you'd have had no product. So you get found out quite quickly in that regard. It's quite a long-winded answer, but it's like timing is everything in our place as it is elsewhere, but it's all, you know, the, the stakes are different, if that makes sense. And with that, uh, one final question for me is like, uh, I, I was thinking about like your clients specifically, because obviously you mentioned something there about like, um, you know, marketing to the now, but also kind of investing for the future. So like, what's your, it, that sounds like a great piece of advice. So like, what, uh, what is your favorite story of like a brand or uh, somebody using that kind of advice that you've given them or just general advice that you've given them on like uh, on their campaigns or on their marketing or on their overall business strategy and finding success from that? Yeah, I think um, uh, when, when modeling like marketing campaigns, I, I always find that the, um, the best place to start with is like where, can, where their customers are and where they're going to be. So uh, in, in the marketing mix, it might be that it might be that currently like this channel, I say channel specifically, this channel takes up, this channel is where X percent of my users currently are. But behind the scenes is like, okay, but what's changing behind the scenes, right? Like what are the, what are the trends that are underlying that? Is that where they're going to be in three or four years time? And how quickly is that changing? So understanding like your marketing mix based on not just the now, but, but where things are moving, but with that balance about timing that I kind of mentioned earlier, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like that critical time sensitive overlay that a lot of marketing campaigns don't really think about. They just kind of like have a plan for the now and execute versus versus the now, if that makes sense. Um, 
So yeah, always trying to balance those two against each other. Like what's 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 hot and what's coming. I love that. Um, and I know you're exceptionally busy, so I really appreciate you taking out the, the time to chat to me. Uh, awesome. wh where can people find out more about Brain Labs? Uh, Brain Labs is on brainlabsdigital.com. Uh, and I'm most active on LinkedIn. So uh, I can't remember my URL, but somewhere, somewhere on LinkedIn. Uh, Daniel, yeah, I'll make sure to, to link in this video as well. <laughs> uh, awesome. Dan, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. <laughs>